This week, Jack, on Investor Intel's top 10, the number one story continues to be why graphite could be the next critical mineral to rise steeply in price. We are dying to hear your opinion on this. First of all, almost all of the graphite used in in lithium-ion battery anodes, it comes from China. Not only is it mined in China, it's processed in China, made it made into anodes, and those anodes are made into cells, the cells are made into batteries. China dominates the graphite space. And so and unless and until we start producing battery grade graphite, which is not only a, a particular purity, but a particular shape in, Nor- in North America, we as like the rest of the world are gonna be totally dependent on China. So is graphite of great interest? Absolutely. Uh, is graphite monopolized by China? Absolutely. Uh, and so if we're going to produce graphite here in competition with China, we're going to need investment. We, ha- we have quite a few graphite deposits in North America, but they need to be developed into producing mines. Then the material needs to be processed into the correct form of graphite. Maybe it needs to be modified a bit by technologies now developed in Canada. Uh, there, there's a lot to be done, and we need to do it now. In the meantime, yeah, gra- graphite is quite um, valuable. So the Critical Minerals Institute is going to have you host that debate and be an expert on that. Probably let's do that in May. What do you say, Jack? Okay, that's that's a good one, because that's an area that North America can probably succeed in becoming self-sufficient. So next on my list, your number two, dominating our top 10 trending uh, list (laughs) on something that I can barely pronounce, letitium. Is it letitium? Yeah, that's that's a good pronunciation. Okay, why? Why does anyone, I don't don't even know what it is. Talk to me, Jack. Uh, Letitium is, is the highest atomic number uh, rare earth uh, metal, and uh, it's quite rare. The total world production is maybe between 50 and 200 tons. Nobody knows because, once again, most of that's in China, and they, they're not very forthcoming. It's used in a few applications, mainly medical, in, in the sense that lutetium is used in the, the most efficient radiation detectors. And, and so uh, I know there are a couple of other uses, but uh, to be honest with you, I, I'm not paying a lot of attention to the tissue market because if the total world production is 80 to 200 tons a year, then price isn't the issue because, uh, you know, the, the, I can only think of one thing offhand that that's it produced in less quantity than lutetium, that would be rhodium. Okay. So, why people are interested, I, I honestly can't tell you. <laughs> but it, it actually, to be honest with you, it's not very interesting. Okay, well, but someone someone's finding it interesting. Is there anything that's happened in the news in the last week or two that would cause such an increase of individuals searching for Letitia? Yes, it, yes. Has, has, has Forbes put something out? What is going on, Jack, though? Because well, we're getting all these high-ranking views Due to your okay. Letitia piece, I, I, and you're tell telling you. me, and you're telling me, and I believe the quote was, "I don't know why it's not very some, interesting." Some scientists have uh, determined that they believe they can create a room temperature superconductor. That is a material that has no resistance to the flow of electricity at room temperature. This is the holy grail of the distribution of electricity. Imagine if there were such a material. You can produce electricity in um, campus casing and and use it in in Key Largo, Florida, and there'd be no losses in the transmission, which it's a reason you can't do that now. So uh, that's a wonderful laboratory experiment. I'm sure they had a beautiful desk and and some great uh, photographers from the university uh, uh, publicity department, but it's nonsense because I just mentioned to you 
the total world production of this material is under 200 tons. Do you honestly think it could be part of a mass distribution system for electricity, even if we could make a room temperature superconductor, which required lutetium? I, I don't believe in that stuff. I, I think that college professors should uh, stick to uh, teaching uh, classes. And forgive me, I have to go look this up. Is lutetium in the critical mineral list? I don't think so, but it, it, it could be now if Forbes decides it's important, I imagine it will make the critical uh, minerals list. Not mine, theirs. On that note, I urge everybody to go to the criticalmineralsinstitute.com website to find out more about Jack Lifton hosted virtual summits monthly on the critical minerals industry. Thank you so much, Jack, for joining us today. Thank you, Tracy.